everyone. This is Code Rhetoric or Coach Tam with another video for YouTube. And I today I actually want to talk about, or I would say perhaps address some of the questions or most common questions that I receive as it relates to medical coding and uh, medical coding industry. So one of the questions that I get, especially from those who have recently obtained their certification is how do they go about securing a, a role as a coder within a healthcare organization or just a coding role in general. So I'm going to try to answer this the best way and the most general way that I possibly can because again I don't work for every healthcare organization and I don't know their process in regards to how they hire coders or newly credentialed coders. And, I, and so I'll share a couple of my experiences as someone who worked in a healthcare organization. So I know one of the healthcare organizations that I worked for, they actually had a mentoring program. And so for those who actually work in that particular healthcare organization, but they did not work in the coding department, however, if they expressed an interest in getting into coding, they had a program or I would say a workshop where those individuals could actually meet with uh, members of the coding leadership team, and they can share their they could share their journey on how they um, was able to secure a coding role, and not so much with that particular organization, but how they just broke out into or started on their journey as a medical coder. So that's one way. Another way is. Um, you know, networking, networking. That's why you have your local chapter. Um, if you're a member of AAPC, that's why it's important that you attend those chapter meetings because um, a lot of times you may meet your new employer, right? Um, they often mention job opportunities um, from, uh, I would say, managers or hiring individuals or organizations who are members of that particular local chapter. And so, um, again, it's an opportunity to network with those um, individuals, and you never know, you may get hired. So those are some of the most common ways, I would say, to break out into this particular industry for your, your new or your next coding role. And then, also, I would say, of course, like I go, I'm going to piggyback, if you currently work in healthcare, um, you know, it's okay to peruse the job openings. Perhaps the coding department at your healthcare organization has openings, right? And you're already there. You're already employed in the, in the system. So that would alleviate some of the, I would say the HR uh, processes um, or onboarding processes to get you in a coding role. But again, that's based on that particular healthcare organization. And I, I can't speak to all of those healthcare organizations. So there's that. So then the next question that I get is, which specialty should I begin? Right? Um, I know a lot of us, we have our favorite specialties, such as cardiology, um, surgery, orthopedic surgery. Um, you know, some of us are, you know, we want to go into auditing, we want to go into, com into compliance, and that is fine. Um, my recommendation for someone, especially someone who hasn't been in the healthcare industry, they're new into the healthcare industry, as well as medical coding. So once you obtain your coding credential um, and you do get how you begin your job search, I would recommend starting with internal medicine and family practice. And here's why. Internal medicine and family practice, you're going to get a taste of a, a little, t uh, I would say a little taste of the different things that actually go on with coding from um, minor procedures, injections, immunizations, evaluation and management, um, a modif you know, applying modifiers. You're going to get a taste of a little bit of all of that. And so with internal medicine, the subspecialties are like cardiology, rheumatology, endocrinology. So you again, you're going to get a little taste of all of those specialties again depending on you know which subspecialty that you're working for. And then what happens is once you find your particular specialty or I would say your jam, 
then maybe when your next role, you want to pursue, uh, again, a role within that particular specialty, like full-fledged. So, for example, if you had a taste of cardiology with internal medicine and you like that, and so your next role, you may want to go full-fledged into a cardiology practice, or you may want to go into, like, cardiovascular or interventional radiology type of surgery, right, because you love the complexity of that specialty. And I will say that I wouldn't recommend, again, this is me, I would not recommend someone to jump into like a vascular surgery, interventional radiology, or a cardiovascular surgery um, as, a, as a beginning coder because, again, those areas or those specialties seems to be the, the most complex specialties to code. Because, again, we're dealing with the vascular system. You have veins, arteries, vessels. Yes, it, it's, it's very complex. Um, so, again, I always recommend that you start off in family, family medicine or family practice as well as internal medicine because you get the opportunity to kind of apply all of your coding. Again, your ICD-10, your CPT, you know, your touching modifiers, evaluation and management minor procedures, you know, you get, in the, you get the gamut of it all. And so, again, once you develop your confidence in that particular area or that specialty, then you can kind of broaden your horizon. Now, for me, I started out in, I'm not going to lie, you know what? I've been in here for many, many years in this, in this industry for many, many years. So... I'm going, okay, so let me tell you about my journey. So I was coding before I had a coding credential, okay? But that was many, many years ago. And so I started out in a medical oncology practice. I actually started out in billing. I was a biller for a medical oncology practice. And then I, you know, went into radiation oncology, and so with, but I wasn't acting as a coder. I was actually like a patient account uh, representative or front front desk um, employee, and was providing the opportunity to go and receive medical coding training. And that was again, I was working in the radiation oncology department, and so once upon receiving my credentials, I did. Uh, transition into a coding role with another facility and I was doing internal medicine family practice and that's how I really was able to touch the different pieces and back then it was ICD-9 not ICD-10 so yeah and then we didn't have electronic medical records and we don't have all the fancy things that we have today um, and you all are so lucky you are so lucky but anyway, so I started an internal medicine family um, practice, and then from there, I transitioned into uh, gastroenterology. So I was a lead coder in gastroenterology, and then that's when I started getting a little taste of compliance because that's when compliance was really jumping on the scene. And so how I got into compliance, I was giving a manual, a thick manual, with the rules and regulations and say, okay, you are our compliance officer, read this, see what we need to do, and we need to start implementing some training for our practice. Say what? <laughs> what? But anyway, so yeah, so I was in gastroenterology and then from gastroenterology, I went into corporate compliance for a teaching organization, uh, a large teaching um, organization. Um, and I, I tell you, it was intimidating, but but uh, prior to getting that role in corporate compliance, I actually went to apply for another coding opportunity. And that um, hiring manager felt like I qualified to work in compliance. And so, you know, <laughs> yeah. So I had to go through my interview process. And it was my first group interview process. It was about a three to four hour interview process, right? Um, I was interviewed by the chief compliance officer, the VP, some of the members of the corporate compliance team. Um, yes. And so from there, like I said, I, and I went through a 90-day training process when it came to auditing. Because, again, keep in mind, this is 
way back then, way back then, not now where we have the tools and the resources and Google and all of that. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I went there and so this facility happened, just happens to be a teaching facility. So there I, I obtained my uh, knowledge on teaching, my knowledge on auditing, my knowledge on communication, my knowledge on being a professional, um, again, all of that with my coding certification. And then, you know, I just kind of grew from there into the different roles. And again, also at that time, we weren't remote. We weren't remote. And so when I left there, I went into orthopedic, orthopedic coding, right? And then, and so on and so on. And then I went into management, coding management and revenue cycle or uh, compliance management. So I was a compliance manager. And then from there, um, Oh my God, I've just been all over the place, <laughs> to be honest with you. So I've, I've, I've been in coding leadership, compliance leadership, as well as an auditor, um, a coder, and now a consultant and contract uh, coder, right? So that's the beauty of it, years of experience, as well as um, being able to oscillate within this particular industry, so, and it does take time. So, like I said, I've been in this industry for a very, very long, <laughs> very long time. Um, but it's been fun, and I'm still in it. And so, I want to, again, encourage you, for those of you who are looking for your, your first coding role or your next coding role, that understand that it does take time. It does take time. Don't give up. Don't get frustrated. But, again... After I gave you that whole long story, to make it short, my recommendation is that you will start with internal medicine and family practice um, to jumpstart your coding career. And again, if you are a member of AAPC and you're, you have a local chapter, get out there and network, introduce yourself. Um, if you're new to the healthcare industry and you are coming from a different industry, you have some skills that will apply to the medical coding industry. Again, communication skills, right? Um, research skills. So, yeah, so sell your the skills that you already have. Just because you haven't worked in the healthcare industry doesn't mean that you, you're not going to find a role as a medical coder or that you don't have anything to offer um, a healthcare or medical coding department. We have something. You passed the test. That was the hard part, right? You passed the test. That was the hard part. So you do have some understanding of what it takes to become a medical coder or to be to succeed at medical coding. So yeah. So that is my word of encouragement, my tips and strategies for securing your role. So yeah. So I'm going to continue to upload videos, um, some tutorials. I may do another drop-in like this. Let me know what, you, what you're what you looking for, what your interest is or are. If you have like uh, a particular specialty or questions about a particular specialties. Um, I also do like the surgical code with me where we actually work through an operative report together. So if you like those, let me know. Again, if you have questions um, regarding a specific specialty, um, product reviews, things of that nature, please, you know, let me know. So, yeah, so until next time, I hope you all have a blessed day and cold on.